The main purpose of the source monitor is to allow you to view your clips at full resolution and establish in and out points. That description makes the source monitor sound simple, and it makes its purpose seem minimal. After all, you can set in and out points in the project panel. However, there is a lot you can do with the source monitor that will make your project go smoother and result in a much higher quality video when you're finished. In this lesson, we're going to talk about viewing clips in the source monitor, configuring the source monitor, working with clips in the source monitor, and interpreting footage. The source monitor offers 10 different views as compared to two in the project panel. To locate the views, go to the panel menu. The panel menu is located in the upper right hand corner of the source monitor panel. The 10 views are composite video, this mode displays video in normal mode. It's also the primary mode. Audio waveform shows the audio waveform as you'll see in this lesson. Alpha shows the transparency of a video or image. All scopes displays a waveform monitor, vector scope, YCBCR parade, and RGB parade. Vector scope measures the clip's color characteristics. YC waveform is used for adjusting brightness and contrast. YCBCR Parade displays the Y, CB, and CR components in IRE. RGB Parade displays the red, green, and blue components separately. VECT, YC Wave, and YCBCR Parade shows the Vector Scope, YC Waveform, and YCBCR Parade. VECT, YC Wave, RGB Parade shows the Vector Scope, YC Waveform, and RGB Parade. These views allow you to view all types of content in the source monitor from video clips to audio to images. In addition, you can have more than one clip open in the source monitor and switch back and forth between them. To view a clip in the source monitor, you can drag the clip into the source monitor from the project panel or double click the clip that you want to view. Audio clips will appear as waveforms. If you want more than one clip in the source monitor, simply drag them from the project panel. In the source monitor, you'll see a triangle beside the clip's name. Click the triangle to switch between the clips. We've clicked on the triangle. The clip with the dot by it is the clip we're currently viewing. To switch clips, we simply click on the other one that's listed. You can also view the audio component of any video clip using the source monitor. To do this, click the drag audio only button. To switch it back to where you can see the video, click the drag video only button. Learning the playback controls in the source monitor will save you a lot of time when you're editing clips for your project. You can mouse over any control to learn the name of the control. We've already discussed most of these in this course, so their purpose should be familiar. The rest we'll discuss as the course progresses, and we start to use more features and tools in Premiere Pro. In addition to all the playback controls, the source monitor also has several configuration options that you can use to customize the source monitor to fit your needs. You can access most of the settings for the source monitor by clicking the panel menu or by clicking the spanner icon. We're going to talk about the different configuration options throughout this lesson before we move on to working with clips in the source monitor. Safe zones, or safe margins, exist so that your video displays as you want it to on devices such as televisions, and that the critical action happens in the right location when the video displays. These are called the title safe zone and the action safe zone. To turn the safe zones on, go to the spanner icon and choose safe margins. The outer white line, or margin, is the action safe zone. The inner line is the title safe zone. To see how these work, we've scrubbed ahead in our clip. Notice, this action doesn't fall within the action safe zone. If you want to change the dimensions of the safe zone, go to File, Project Settings. Go to the Action and Title Safe Areas section. Any clip loaded into the source monitor is scaled to fit in the panel. However, if you need to see the full size video, you can also do that. To customize the magnification level, click the Fit drop-down menu. Select a zoom level. The resolution that you use to preview your video in the source monitor may need to be adjusted. Full resolution may result in slower playback, or less than the full frame rate for the video, depending on the video source as well as the graphics card on your computer. 
When you're working with and editing the project, you may find that real-time playback becomes more important than the quality of the pixels that you're seeing in the source monitor. To change the resolution, click the Select Playback Resolution drop-down menu. Select the resolution that you want. You can choose 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth, or 1 sixteenth. You can also go to the Panel menu. To adjust the paused resolution, go to the Panel menu and select Paused Resolution. When your video is paused, playback is not a concern. For that reason, it's recommended that you choose full or 100% for your paused resolution. Dropped frames are frames that are skipped over during playback. The frames are skipped over because a hard disk cannot keep up or because your computer processor cannot apply all the effects in time. Premiere Pro displays an indicator to let you know when frames are dropped. To enable it, go to the panel menu and choose Show Dropped Frame Indicator. When frames are dropped, the indicator turns orange. You can mouse over it to see how many frames were dropped. Interlaced footage occurs when two fields are showing in the display. It looks like you have part of one frame mixed with the current frame. In other words, you have double images. There may be times you want to see the double images, such as debugging a rendering issue. Most of the time, however, you'll want to get rid of it. So here's how to fix it. Go to the panel menu and select either display field first to display the first of the interlaced field, display second field to display the second field, or display both fields to display them both. Note, you configure the program panel in the same way as the source monitor. Once you have the source monitor configured, you can use it to complete tasks in Premiere Pro, such as inserting markers and establishing in and out points. We've already talked about in and out points in this course, so you should know what they are. Markers, on the other hand, are used to mark points you might use later in the editing process. For example, you may want to mark the point for a DVD chapter. The in and out points, as well as the markers you choose, may be selected by a point in the video. However, they may also be selected by points in the audio waveform. For that reason, when selecting points or markers, it may help to zoom in. To adjust the detail to better add points or markers, drag the edge of the zoom scroll bar. To see more detail, drag it inward. To see less detail, drag it outward. You can also move the bar to the desired spot in the clip. In the last section, we adjusted detail using horizontal zoom. You can zoom in vertically as well. To zoom in vertically, grab the edge of the vertical scroll bar. Drag inward for more detail and drag outward for less detail. The source monitor displays video time code. However, it can also display audio time units. This can be helpful when you want to add points or markers using the audio of a clip. To enable or disable audio time units, go to the panel menu. Select Show Audio Time Units. To add a marker, start out by dragging the playhead to the location where you want to place the marker. Next, you can click the Marker button. You can also go to the marker in the menu bar, then select Add Marker. The marker then appears above the time ruler. There's another marker indicator above the frame that contains the marker. Double-click on the marker to add more information about it. In the Marker dialog box, you can add a name for the marker, comments about the marker, and the type of marker it is. We'll talk more about this dialog box when we discuss markers again in relation to the timeline. To move a marker, grab it and drag it to a new location. We already learned to set in and out points in the project panel, so now we're going to set them in the source monitor, and setting them in the source monitor is just as easy. To set in and out points, drag the playhead to the point you want to use as the endpoint. Click the Mark In button. Now drag the playhead to the out point. Click the Mark Out button. Think of a subclip as an excerpted part of a clip that you imported. Perhaps you have 30 seconds of footage, but you want to use 10 seconds of that footage separately. You also want to edit it separately, so you can do this by creating a subclip. To create a subclip, mark in and out points for the subclip. Go to Clip, Subclip, or right-click in the Source Monitor and select Make Subclip. You'll then see the Make Subclip dialog box. Enter a name for the subclip, 
Then uncheck Restrict Trims to Subclip Boundaries so you can access all frames in the master clip for future editing. Click OK. You can now see the subclip, which we named New Subclip, in the project panel. It appears as its own clip. If you want to edit the subclip, right-click on it in the project panel and select Edit Subclip. You'll then see the Edit Subclip dialog box. You can extend the clip's duration by adjusting the start or end values. You can also convert it to a master clip. This is basically a duplicate of the master clip that you use to create the subclip. Sometimes an image or a clip can seem distorted in Premiere Pro. This is due to the various types of source footage, such as HDV and JPEG. They have different frame rates, aspect ratios, transparency values, etc. To fix this, go to the image or clip in the project panel. Right click on the image or clip and then select Modify Interpret Footage. You'll then see the Interpret Footage dialog box. Using this dialog box, you can fix the four main problems that cause distortion. Frame rate, if the footage is faster or slower than the real frame rate, check Assume This Frame Rate, then enter the real frames per second. You'll probably need to experiment to get it just right. Pixel Aspect Ratio. This is one of the most common problems. Check Conform To, then the correct aspect ratio. You'll need to experiment to find the right one. Field Order. If the problem is field order, you'll have jittery footage in the timeline or after rendering. Select Conform To, then choose the correct field order. Alpha channel problems are with logos, titles, and such, and manifests itself as the wrong portion of an image being transparent. See if checking either of these boxes fixes the problem.